Come back. Thank you. Senator Moranti, members of the committee, my name is Lynn Rex, representing the League of Nebraska Municipalities, L-Y-N-N-R-E-X. What's being passed out to you is a letter from the mayor of Lincoln, Nebraska, in opposition to this measure. In addition, a letter from the Police Chiefs Association of Nebraska, referred to as PECAN. I'm not here today to testify on behalf of Mayor Beitler specifically or PECAN, but I do want to refer some of the uh, information in their letters for your review. First and foremost, I do want to say we too think that it's possible to work out amendments to accommodate most of our critical, important, critically important issues here today, and we appreciate Senator Hillinger's willingness to meet with us to do so. With that, I would like to say first and foremost in response to you, Senator, there is a federal requirement in terms of interstate travel from state to state, and one of the amendments that we think needs to apply here that needs to happen in Nebraska law is to apply that same standard for intrastate travel. That being said, one does need to have exceptions for uh, retired law enforcement officers, law enforcement officers, concealed carry permit holders, so they don't have to take the bullets out uh, in between places, if you will. In addition, uh, I do want to emphasize a few things as soon as I know the letters, you are all in receipt of those letters, to emphasize the unprecedented nature of some of the provisions of this measure and why we strongly oppose it in its current form. Uh, with that, I think you now all have these letters, and I want to just, first of all, I have you reference the letter from Mayor Beitler. Again, I'm not representing the city of Lincoln, but I do want you to have this letter, and I, I'm just going to highlight some of the uh, areas. <laughs> Local control. If you look at this element, constituents in different areas of the state may believe that additional ordinances are appropriate necessary to address the issues faced by their community. <coughs> I think that the testifier before me, representing the Omaha Police Officer Association, underscores that what happens in Omaha, Nebraska is fundamentally different uh, in terms of gang violence and everything else than what may happen in whether it is Gearing or Hemingford, Nebraska, or any other place in the state of Nebraska, maybe not Lincoln. The scope of this. Uh, appears to prevent municipalities from prohibiting guns in places like City Hall, city agency buildings, courthouses, or city parks, while state agencies could prohibit the possession of firearms in the state capitol, state buildings, state parks, and other similar locations. Again, what applies to local governments would not apply to you. We think it's important to protect those uh, citizens when they're in municipal facilities as well. Law enforcement clearly would impact the ability of local police to enforce state gun laws and or crimes involving guns. We have some real significant concerns about that. And this language has been looked at from city attorneys all across the state of Nebraska that do have these same kinds of concerns. It's not just limited to Mayor Beitler and his concerns. And then I think, too, the potential litigation, absolutely unprecedented to set a new course of litigation against municipalities outside of the Political Subdivision Tort Claims Act. Again, it would not apply to counties. It would not even apply to the state of Nebraska, but unprecedented in terms of allowing to have this kind of litigation. If you look on page 15 of this bill, uh, it talks about who could actually sue. Page 15, line 18, a person adversely affected by an ordinance, and I'm just going to paraphrase. Line 18, a person adversely affected by an ordinance. Line 20, may file an action. Then let's talk about who's adversely affected. Line 26, the person is an individual who may legally possess a firearm and the individual is or was subject to the ordinance. Going down to lines 30, 31, was physically present within the boundaries of the city or village for any reason. And then my personal favorite is on page 16, line 3. The person is a membership organization. What's that constitute? Two people. So the Senator John Moranti and Lynn Rex Organization for Gun Owners. We could sue anybody in the state of Nebraska, any municipality in the state of Nebraska, whether we've ever been there or not, wouldn't matter. And then look at what is at stake on lines 11, 12, and 13. Actual damages, including consequential damages, court costs, reasonable attorney fees. In addition, I just want to underscore the letter from Chief Bill Meisner. He is the president of the Police Chiefs Association of Nebraska. He wished he could be here today, but was, wasn't able to do so. And I will just quickly read you his one-sentence letter. The Police Chiefs Association of Nebraska wishes to respectfully oppose LB 68. While we respect the Second Amendment, we recognize that communities need to have the ability to identify local problems and develop local responses to those problems. We also disagree with the establishment of a standard for individuals and organizations to have standing to sue municipalities. And my parenthesis is in such an unprecedented way from counties or even the state of Nebraska itself. As you know, there's a state political subdivision tort claims act. There is a political subdivision tort claims act. This isolates municipalities for the purposes of lawsuits and lawsuits and more lawsuits. So with that, I just 
first of all, again, want to go back and say we appreciate Senator Hilgers being willing to meet with us and talk about some of these issues. I appreciate that when Senator, uh, pardon me, Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Wagner, I wouldn't want to give him a demotion in pay. <laughs> uh, when Sheriff Wagner uh, testified in support of this bill, he did note, and I'm going to quote this, LB 68 may prohibit cities and counties from enacting an ordinance or rule that would prohibit someone from bringing an open carry firearm into any government building. That obviously is a concern of ours as well. I'd be happy to respond to any questions you might have and again appreciate the willingness to testify today. Thank you very much for your testimony. Senator Brewer. Thank you, General. All right. Let's back up a little. I uh, understand that uh, the concerns I'm getting are if you're from Valentine, Nebraska, and you come to Lincoln, Nebraska, and you establish laws that are going to be more restrictive, you could easily commit either a misdemeanor or a felony and never know that that restriction is there. So, by having this patchwork, uh, how do you keep from committing a crime without knowing it because of each town deciding whatever combination of laws that they want to establish? Well, Senator, I do want to differentiate between traveling from place to place, which relates to what Senator Blood's question is, which is making sure that the same laws that apply interstate would apply intrastate. So there's absolutely no problem if you would look at that kind of an amendment, which is very similar to AM 1915 that Senator Moorfeld uh, offered to Senator Epke's bill LB 289 last year with some amendments needed for law enforcement retired and concealed carry permit holders. That being said, uh, quite frankly, I think it gets to the issue that the individual from the Omaha Police Officers Association noted, which is the police officers exercise a great deal of discretion and common sense in my view. And indeed, I will tell you that I don't think that they're out trying to find individuals to do that. So I don't believe that uh, this, this quote patchwork has any negative implications for individuals. I, and it gets to the issue as well that Senator uh, Blood noted, which is where are these individuals that have been unduly prosecuted? Where are those individuals? Because we don't see them. We see them in Omaha with gang members, uh, where if they don't register, and of course they're not going to register, that that is one way in which Omaha police officers are able to hold individuals uh, that in fact have not registered as a way to get them off the streets and maybe prevent some repeat offenses that very night. So things of that nature. But um, we do think that there are ways to address the very issue you're raising through some amendments, and we're prepared to look at those and, and, work, I, and work with Senator Hilders. Did I hear you right that you wanted to change the rules for intrastate to be the same as interstate? Right now, when you go from state to state, you're able to do that. Uh, and there are certain rules that apply to concealed carry permit holders, certain rules that apply to others as well. For example, uh, retired law enforcement officers and law enforcement officers are allowed to do that. Uh, what I'm suggesting to you is an amendment that would say that interstate from city to city to city uh, would, uh, the same thing would apply. So when you're passing through Sarpy County and passing from uh, Gretna, Papillion, and La Vista and you blink your eyes and you're in one city or another, uh, that you don't have to worry about whether or not by passing through or transporting or you're going to go hunting, you leave Lincoln, Nebraska to go up to Scott's Bluff or the Panhandle. You don't have to worry when you're doing that, passing through one jurisdiction to another. With certain exceptions, the AM 1915 to, to LB 289 last year would accommodate that. Okay, thank you. You're thank welcome. You, Any additional questions? Senator Breezy? Thank you, Senator. Thank you for being here. I, I too noticed on line three uh, standing given to a membership organization to sue line three of 16. But the two people you mentioned there, they have to be adversely affected by the statute or by the ordinance also. Correct? Well, but, but adversely affected. That's. Yes, Senator, that's, that's the issue. Because if you look on page 15, line 18, who is an ad, a person adversely affected? Line 18, a person adversely affected may file an action. That's on line 20. And then let's see who is adversely affected. Line 24, a person is adversely affected for purposes of this act if, and there's a one and there's a two. So let, let's look at the small i on line 26. The person is an individual who may legally possess a firearm, and I'm just picking out some of the words here, and the individual is or was subject to the ordinance, measure, enactment, rule, or policy of the city or village. Then you go on and continue, and it says, if the, line 30, if the individual is or was physically present within the boundaries of the city or village for any reason, but then go to the next page, and this is the one that is absolutely open-ended, page 16, lines 3 through 7. The person is a membership organization that includes two or more people. This is a person adversely affected. That's why you could have someone from Texas 
suing any city in the state, in, uh, suing any city in the state of Nebraska, whether or not they've ever been in Nebraska, whether or not they ever intend to come to Nebraska. This gives them standing to sue. They may, this, they would be quote defined by statute, Senator, as being quote adversely affected to individuals who say, according to line four and five. Um, basically, the person is a membership organization that includes two or more individuals dedicated in whole or in part to protecting the rights of persons to possess, own, or use firearms for competitive, sporting, defensive, or other lawful purposes. And again, two individuals, and that means any place in this country. But as per lines uh, 28 through 30 on page 35, they had to have been physically present in the boundaries of the city or village uh, no, that, the ordinance was applied for that. Uh, no, because what the way that you read that is that everything under the small i relates to that person. There's two categories of adversely affected. One is the person who's actually there, and then you go to the next page, this, the two i's with, that starts on line three, and there you have a membership organization. So persons would be defined as either an individual or a membership organization, a membership organization of two or more people. And that is why there are cities in Pennsylvania, I think a previous testifier noted, um, that were being, or cities, I'm sorry, in Pennsylvania that were being sued by individuals in Texas. The same thing could happen here. This sets up an unprecedented level of standing for individuals to sue. And more, and even as important, outside of the Political Subdivision Tort Claims Act, Outside of that, and outside of the state political subdivision tort claims act, so counties, state of Nebraska, you would not be subject to the same types of litigation to which you would subject municipalities. And I would say, on its face, LB 68 voids 11 municipal ordinances just in the city of Lincoln. Thanks for your question. Follow-up question: How many ordinances in uh, Omaha would be voided by? I know the registration ordinance, and I would have to verify. And I, I will, I will do that and get back to you on their number of ordinances, Senator. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the questions. Thank you. Any additional questions? Seeing none. Thank thanks you for your, your consideration. Again, thanks for Senator Hillger's being willing to meet with us. Thank, thank you. you.